people have been good at who've been up here has had a yes mentality. And from that, I mean that they've said yes when I've asked them if they'd be on the podcast or I'd ask them to participate in these things. One of the people who's been really great at that uh, is our next speaker, Matt Harper, uh, who said yes from the beginning and always has said yes, sometimes to his detriment. Uh, but Matt is also really good at interacting with millennials. And I know that some of us are millennials, so you know we kind of take exception to that. But don't worry, when I was young, Generation X was getting kicked through the, the media hole where Generation X was the horrible little Scrooge and you know we were never going to do anything right. Now it's the millennials' turn. But I do think there are some ways that he really interacts with a lot of the young kids that I think are good, especially when it comes to sales training and really managing you know, really some of those expectations. Without further ado, Matt Harper. I would say thanks, Troy, but uh, having to follow that up, I got some other words for you. Um, but uh, thanks for coming out today. Um, show of hands, who, who here has heard the stereotypes of the millennials? They're lazy, they're self-absorbed, they only care about the money, they invented the selfie. I mean, all terrible things, right? That's, that's something that, that we're starting to hear more and more uh, about this millennial generation. And what we're starting to see, not just in the sports industry, but really across the board in, in a many industries where managers are weary of hiring millennials because of some of these stereotypes. They're also worried about or weary of hiring millennials because of the fear of the unknown. They've never had millennials on their staff. They've never had someone like this on their staff. They're also worried about the inability as a manager to be able to evolve their training. Um, you do not motivate a millennial with fear. Uh, that, that's something I learned the hard way, uh, but th that's not the way you, you manage a millennial. So the fear of the unknown, stereotypes, and the fact that it's not business as usual is really turning off some managers to this new generation of potential salespeople, and it's really costing many organizations, not just in the sports industry, but across the board on, some, on acquiring some very talented people. Th what's key is you don't want to be intimidated by young and even inexperienced salespeople based on the generalizations um, that you hear about millennials, including some of the stereotypes where they're lazy, they're self-absorbed, they think everything should be handed to them on a silver platter. Uh, you, you have to be weary of that. I mean, if you look back in time, you could really say that about every generation that's come across. Uh, right now, we live in a 24-hour news cycle, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, Instagram, so you hear more and more about the millennials and you're hearing more about the, the negative things that they're doing and we're hearing more about those stereotypes, but my generation had lazy people, my generation had self-absorbed people, my dad tells me that his generation had a lot of lazy self-absorbed people too, but we're hearing more and more about it now, so that's, that's turning us off. Now let's not pretend that there isn't a percentage of millennials that don't fit some of those stereotypes to a T. There are lazy millennials, there are self-absorbed millennials, there are millennials that can't go an hour without taking a selfie. As a manager, that's where it's your role during the recruiting process and during the hiring process to weed out those individuals. So don't hold an entire generation, an entire potential workforce uh, accountable for some of the actions of a small percentage of that group. And as a manager, take that challenge on during the recruiting and hiring process to make sure that you're not, you're not uh, ignoring those people, but you're weeding out the ones who could come in and be a cancer to your sales environment. One of the big keys to managing millennials is understanding what drives and, and motivates them and actually implementing that into your day-to-day -day managing style. Again, fear does not motivate a millennial, so there may be a, a time where you as a manager has to evolve, and that's okay. Uh, as someone who works in college athletics, I do not have a budget to pay significantly to my sales reps, and I have two former sales reps in here who are both nodding at that. Um, so there are different things that you have to do to motivate millennials. 
figuring out what that is and what that entails can lead to drastic results when employing millennials. The benefits that I've experienced of employing millennials on a sales team. First and foremost, millennials are extremely motivated for immediate success. Now this is something that somehow, some way, the media has turned into a negative thing. People are, want immediate success. I don't know how that's a bad thing, but we hear negative things about millennials all the time, about this new generation, they want immediate success. I don't want you on my sales team if you don't want immediate success. I don't want you on my sales team if you want to stay on my sales staff for four to five years. I want you to come in, I want you to learn what I have to teach as a sales manager, and I want you to get on the phones, get in appointments, and start making sales and start enjoying success. Uh, the idea that these that young individuals coming into an environment and wanting immediate success, that being held against them, I think is ridiculous and I think it's something you have to understand and use as your benefit. Put, the, put millennials on the phone, get them involved. They are driven by immediate success. It's in their DNA. It's part of what they've experienced growing up. Use it to your advantage. Millennials understand the value of mentors and are loyal to those who take, who take the time to help them grow. I've seen that firsthand. Uh, some of the closest friends that I have right now and also some of the closest colleagues that I have in the industry are individuals that I hired and managed and have since seen go on to other, to other jobs within the industry. Uh, on two different occasions, I had 23, 24 year olds making not a lot of money without benefits get offered positions to go work, one in the NBA, one in the NFL. They would have gotten benefits, a better uh, commission structure, a better salary, and they would have been in the professional sports. They turned it down both times. Now, they all ultimately went on to different jobs, but a part of why they turned down that position was because of the relationship that we had built together, and they understood I was interested in what was best for them. I never told them not to take the job. I never told them to take the job. But they understood if they ultimately said no to any job offer, that I was going to support them and that I was going to have their back to help them find the next job offer. During my recruiting and hiring process, I tell every individual that I hire or that I interview and hire, give me 12 to 15 months. That's all I ask. 12 to 15 months where I can coach you up and train you and you can produce numbers. And after those 12 to 15 months, I will do everything in my power, including writing a letter of recommendation for the top salesperson I ever had to get a job with the 49ers. Thanks, guys. Uh, but I will do anything I can to help them move on in their career. And that's, that's what it's all about. And when you, when you have those relationships, you'll see the loyalty come through from those sales reps. Millennials are coachable and willing to learn when a clear direction is presented. You can't just give a millennial a goal and say, hey, I want you to go out and sell $150,000 in season tickets. Let's go get them. What you need to do with a millennial is sit down with them, let them know, hey, your goal this year is $150,000 in new season ticket revenue, and actually devise a plan for them. And let them have feedback on the plan. Give them a roadmap to success of how they can ultimately get to that revenue number. Uh, let them have buy-in and feedback in exactly what they're going to be doing and selling, and you will be amazed at how quickly and how successful uh, they can be. They want buy-in and they want to be able to give feedback, and millennials really want that direction and knowing how they're going to get there, not just a big pie-in-the-sky number. Lastly, and this is without a doubt, the biggest benefit I've noticed uh, in having millennials on my sales staff is how creative millennials are, uh, not just in the workplace, but, but outside of the workplace. Uh, there are a lot of ideas that come out of my sales office, whether it was at San Jose State or at the University of Oregon. I would say 90% of the good ideas, whether it's sales, promotion, uh, packaging, at least 90% of those ideas come from my staff. 
There's no doubt about it. Uh, we have weekly meetings where it's nothing but brainstorming. Uh, what giveaways can we do? How can we package mini plans? What pricing should we do? So that does a couple of things. First and foremost, my staff is the one that's on the phones. My staff is the one that's talking to the public. So if we're talking about going on sale with a mini plan and the fan base is telling them that we're not interested in certain games, why are we gonna build a mini plan around that? Secondly, it gives them buy-in. I mean, can you imagine when you were 23, 24 years old and whatever you were doing, if your manager came to you and said, hey, I want your idea so I can run it up the ladder so we can sell more tickets, so you can make more commission. It gives them buy-in, and when you ultimately get it approved by whoever's above you, or if you approve it, if it can end with you, it's amazing how excited they are to go out and sell a product, to go out and sell a package or a plan, because it's their plan. They got to build it. Um, and, and the other thing that, that is really big as well, we're trying to figure out how to get millennials, I know at least at the University of Oregon, we're trying to figure out how to get millennials to come to Autzen Stadium. We're trying to figure out how to get millennials to come to Matthew Knight Arena, to PK Park, and I'm sure all of you out there are trying to figure that out as well. I'm not a millennial. My managers at the University of Oregon, at San Jose State, at Seattle U, we're not millennials. So why is, why is an older group of people trying to devise a marketing plan, sales plan, ticket packages, when they're not millennials? So we're trying to figure out how to sell to a group that we don't understand because we're not them. So we, we need to involve millennials in our decision making and our packaging and let them feel like they have real buy-in in the success of the, of the organization. What motivates millennial salespeople? Um, again, working in college athletics, um, and, and I say this and, and I feel lucky to do it, working in college athletics, I don't have a huge budget for salaries, so I have had to hire young, inexperienced salespeople who are millennials, um, and I have enjoyed it immensely because I've learned a lot as well, I've evolved a lot as well, and I've learned quite a few things from them about how they want to be managed, and I feel like it's made me an immensely better manager. First and foremost, millennials, young people, they want immediate feedback. Um, University of Oregon, I had the opportunity to have my own office. It would have been great, uh, but at the same time, I knew if I had my own office, I would be away from my staff, and it wasn't necessarily that I was worried about being away from my staff because I didn't think they were going to be productive. I didn't think they were going to make calls. I didn't think they were going to set meetings. I was worried about being away from my staff because I couldn't provide them the immediate feedback. I couldn't answer questions that they may have. Um, and there are small things that have kind of built me over the years, using only instead of just, making sure you're asking for a referral, making sure you're making the recommendation at the right time. There are certain things that, that over time have become fundamental for me and the way I want to be as a manager. And if I'm not, and we call it the bullpen, if I'm not in the bullpen with my staff, I cannot provide that immediate feedback to them. But it's also not always negative or corrective feedback. It's also positive feedback. Uh, when somebody makes a sale, set, make, sells a group ticket, sets an appointment, to be there with them and let them know, hey, Ryan, that sounded like a tough call, but you ended up closing it. Great job using X, Y, and Z to ultimately get to the sale. Um, again, for some, and when you look at these, th these are things that, that help motivate and drive millennials, and they're pretty simple. Um, pretty simple to do. On the job training, so when I first started as a manager, you know, my, my management or my training strategy was let's all get in a room, we're going to shut the door and we're going to sit there for four hours and we're going to go through this PowerPoint and then we're going to go to lunch, then we're going to come back and we're going to go to this PowerPoint again and we're going to do that for the next week. And we'll do some mock phone calls, we'll do some mock meetings. Um, after about an hour and a half of two hours of listening to me, and there was some interaction, it wasn't just me, they were lost. Even if they didn't have their phones with them so they could check their social media, I saw in their eyes, they were thinking about what was on their phones on their social media. Um, 
millennials, young people want on-the-job training, and you have to trust them that they can be successful when doing it. Give them the background, give them the fundamentals, the open-ended questions, asking for a referral, making a recommendation, and ultimately asking for the sale. But if you try to lock a, one millennial or a group of millennials in a room and do a week long of training, four to five hours a day, you've lost them. They're no longer motivated. Get them on the phones, even if it's doing mock phone calls. Include your administrators, include your senior level uh, salespeople, and have them start making calls um, so, you can, so they understand how it's going. Because uh, I'm telling you, it gets really boring, even for me as a sales manager, to do mock phone calls for six hours a day for the last two days of training. They get tired of my voice, I get tired of their voice, and then the first call they make, they get asked a question that we never thought of because neither one of us are from the University of Oregon. Um, so there are things that you can do. On-the-job training is really big. Train them on what to do, not how to do it. I have never given anybody that, that has worked for me a script. I don't think they work, and I think you sound like a robot when you use them. Um, there are some people when you call, it happens a lot more at Oregon than it did at San Jose State. Some people you call, hey, I'm at the University of Oregon. I mean, literally, what are you selling? Yes, I want to buy. Okay, so let's, let's get their contact information. Uh, there are other times where you have to go through the process. Uh, but to give somebody a script and to have them chained down by that, to ask those questions, um, and it doesn't make sense in my mind in general, but it certainly doesn't make sense for millennials. Again, this is a creative group. This is an interactive group. Let them be creative with their phone calls. Um, I mean, some of the things that I've heard some of my staff say, I kind of just drop my pen and turn around. Because um, it doesn't sound great, but then when you get off the phone, you don't jump in and stop what they're saying, and you figure out exactly what was said, what the interaction was, you're like, wow. That was really good, and ultimately, more times than not, they closed the sale. Um, so teach millennials what to do, but don't tell them how to do it. Let them figure it out on their own. Let them develop their own style. Um, I don't think I've ever had two salespeople that I've ever had work for me that I could say were the exact same. And I think when you do a script, when you chain people down to a script, you get robots and their personality and their creativity can't come through. Uh, and I think it ultimately hurts sales numbers. They are motivated by money. Who isn't? Um, understand that. Again, this is something that people have tried to make millennials out to be bad people. Uh, and they've tried to stereotype them as being lazy because they're motivated by money. I think everyone is motivated by money. Uh, you're in sales for the most part, so you're probably motivated by money. There are times where, especially at the entry level, maybe you can't pay exactly what you would like to pay someone. Maybe you can't pay them exactly what they're looking for. Or you're moving them up, up the ladder, and they're going from an inside sales rep to an outside guy or to a group guy or gal. Um, and you can't pay the exact salary, but you can get creative. I know I've had, had sales reps where I couldn't match what they wanted salary or had been offered in salary. But I went to my upper management and we put in benchmarks where if they hit 110% of, of what they did the previous year, we would give them a bonus. If they hit 115% and so on, because that's, that's just net money that we're getting that we're putting back in. So understand that millennials are motivated by money, but also understand there are ways to get creative. It doesn't necessarily have to be salary. There are ways commission structure, there are bonuses that you can do. The more creative you get, uh, the, the better off you can be. Reward them. Last Thursday, my sales staff and I went up to the Nike employee store in Beaverton, Oregon. We had hit our sales revenue goal for three months in a row. Um, it cost me nothing but gas. It cost the University of Oregon nothing. But my staff was beyond excited for the opportunity to be able to go up to Beaverton, Oregon, to go into the Nike employee store and buy everything that they wanted for up to 50% off. 
Um, the millennials, again, this is something everybody likes. Everybody likes to be rewarded. Um, and sometimes people get confused by rewards and think, oh no, I gotta spend more money. No you don't. You go to lunch every day, right? Take one of your sales reps to lunch. Um, work with your, in my case, college athletics. If you work in the pro space, director of sales, VP of sales, whatever the case may be, set up a lunch for those individuals. Uh, again, understand millennials are, want immediate success. So the more access you can give them to successful people, they value that far more than they would a $50 gift card. Trust me. Uh, you know, don't, don't think that giving somebody a $50 gift card is, is, is a great reward. I mean, they're not going to turn it down, but there's so many different things that you can do. If there's a pro team outside of where you work or, or outside of your organization in your location, do a group outing. If everybody on the team likes to play golf, take them out and play golf. Um, and give them uh, verbal rewards as well. When they do a good job, don't take them for granted. Let them know, hey, great job. Um, let them know, hey, you killed it last week. That's, that's crazy. Though that positive reinforcement, again, this isn't just for millennials. I mean, you should be doing this for everyone. Um, but the millennials really respond to this. Set clear expectations for success. We've already talked about this a little bit, but you don't, you don't tell, you shouldn't tell any salesperson, but let alone a millennial who maybe is kind of getting their feet wet in the sales industry, you don't tell them, hey, I got a big goal for you, $150,000, high five, go get them, kid. No, let them know how they're going to get there. Let them know how many appointments it's going to take. Let them know how many contacts it's going to take with each business based on what you guys have done in the past, how many, what the average sale is. So if the average season ticket sale is 3.1 based on historic numbers and they need to sell 1,000 tickets, let them know. Here's how many people you're gonna to need to sell to. And then you should also be able to track what your close rate is. So, so then you can also let them know, you need to sell to 1,000 people, you need to call 5,000 people. And let them know how they're going to get to that ultimate goal, how they're gonna be ultimately successful in your organization. Focus more on what they do, not when they do it. Nine to five, in general, to me, is, is dead. Uh, I talked to somebody earlier today. They were out with a client selling tickets, selling a suite. They were out with a client last night. Um, so don't, don't expect necessarily millennials or, or really anyone, but millennials in particular, don't expect them to just come in, smile and dial, go to meetings from nine to five and then wrap it up. Um, that's not, in my opinion, that's not how the industry really works now to begin with. But understand that they're going to be able to sell, they're going to be able to have a lot of activity outside of your traditional nine to five hours. Have them out in the market, going to chamber events, give them some, an opportunity to do that. Seek their input and encourage collaboration. Talked about this a little bit already, but understand they want, they want to be able to give you feedback. And again, they have a lot of valuable information they can provide you. Use that to your advantage. Build the relationship. Brought this up earlier. Some of my closest friends and colleagues in the industry are people I used to manage. Uh, I built that relationship with them. I sat down basically on a monthly basis with those individuals, letting them know, here's where I think you're headed. Um, I can help you. Hey, there's a job opportunity with Company X. There's a job opportunity with Team Y. Are you interested in it? How can I help you get there? Let them have those open chain of communications, and I'm telling you, A, they will perform for you a lot better. B, they will remain loyal until that perfect opportunity comes up. And also, we talked about this just then, discuss their future goals and aspirations with them. How are you gonna build a relationship? How are you gonna get success out of someone if you don't know ultimately where they want to go. I just lost one of my best sales reps to Colorado State. He became an intern because he wants to work in fundraising. So we figured out and we laid out a game plan of how he could get out of sales, where he could have been very successful and was very successful, but fundraising's where his heart was. So we devised a plan, got him into that. He's at Colorado State, he started today. He's an intern, but it's what he ultimately wanted to do. 
I didn't force him anyway, but he felt 100% confident to come to me and say, hey, this may sound crazy. I want to take a step down to get into what my passion is, and he's doing it. Have that relationship with people. Discuss what they ultimately want to do in their career. And again, they'll be loyal, and they'll also perform for you. When you manage millennials correctly, they can bring a lot of successful and desired traits to your sales staff. Um, not just in terms of numbers and revenue that they can help produce, uh, but also a collaborative and teamwork environment that everybody in here who manages a sales staff wants. Uh, they're great, and, and I would just encourage you, uh, I'm not saying anybody has, but avoid the stereotypes, don't be intimidated by them, and, and manage them the way that they want to be managed, the way that they respond to, and they'll put up great numbers for you. Thank you. Any questions?